Good morning. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm Laura Lopez. I lead sponsorships and partnerships at Rakuten TV. So mainly everything that has to do with monetizing our content on the streaming platform. And today, I think we're going to speak about one of the biggest challenges, both for entertainment and for sports industry, which is fan engagement and how to build strategies for loyalty and monetization of fans. I think it is, well, Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I think it really doesn't matter if we're working for social media, if we're a streaming platform, if we are a content provider. I think nowadays keeping people's attention, it's really a big challenge, and especially if we're talking to younger generations. So just to kick off this panel and a little bit as a warm up, I would like to ask each of you from your business experience and from your company, what is your strategy and even your secret recipe to keep fans engaged. So, Lucas. Um, yes, yeah. uh, who is uh, familiar with Forty Three? Well, that's, that's quite that's good. good. So, <laughs> Forty Three is the, the biggest social uh, football platform in the world. Um, and we see ourselves as the biggest locker room in the world. And that's really what we try to do with everything we create on our channels, um, really make it as if we are just a person in this locker room together. So people really feel like a personal connection with our brand. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is that we know exactly how to produce content that is relevant at the moment you are watching a game and opening your Instagram account. We know if uh, Kevin De Bruyne scores a goal, we immediately have something ready for the community to engage with. Um, that's one of our secret references. So speed <laughs> is one speed, of the speed, speed and and reaction yeah. Yeah, and relevancy. Yeah. So, Genio? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I was taking notes, because obviously 433 is a big referent. I would say on them, maybe we have time to extend uh, speed. Definitely it is. But uh, to be authentic, to have a very personal Tone of voice that you can really engage with the community. Community understand what you are doing, and you are being loyal to them for them to be loyal to you. So be authentic. Mm -hmm. Well, um, hello everyone. Thank you for having me, uh, and good morning. Uh, I will say that we do a lot of things. Uh, first of all, of course, is to be where they are. You know, if you are trying to reach <coughs> the younger generations, for example, we are collaborating also with 433. Uh, because we know that they are following them. Uh, but we have uh, membership cards related to children, even babies. So we are doing a lot of things because we are working uh, with the children from the scratch because we have a big academy. So they are playing with our jersey on a daily basis and they are training. So we have a very good relationship also with the, with the families. Um, of course, another thing that we do is that uh, we try to collaborate with our partners. For example, with AEA Sports, we have a, a team, uh, eSports team, so it's another way to approach. And finally, I think uh, that we are not thinking just on commercial, you know? I think uh, one of the most beautiful things that we do is through our foundation, for example, and we are trying to communicate about what is happening in the schools with the bullying, with the mental health, and how we can approach that from the visibility that we can bring onto the table. So I will say that is an holistic approach, you know? Fantastic. I think football can play a critical role in that side. So, Cristina? Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. In YouTube, uh, shorts formats have been proved that it's like a, a format where drive a lot of uh, younger audiences to the platform, especially uh, Gen Z. And what we've seen is that shorts enter to the platform a younger audience enter to the platform through shorts to watch long-form content. And we have an example for ESPN Sports, where while they wanted to have like rich new audiences or younger audiences, and at the same time to gain retention and engage with those audiences, so they create shorts, and at the same time they upload podcasts, and they are seeing like a huge increase on new younger audiences, but also a huge engagement on long-form content with this podcast. So it's a good strategy to engage with the new audiences, young, especially younger. And, uh, and it's, it's a, an amazing, uh, we've seen an amazing growth on younger audiences on the platform and a, a big fun engagement. 
they say Jen said have like only 10 seconds of attention, if I'm not wrong. So that's quite a yeah. challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so Lucas, moving on, you explained it really well. For 33, it's a um, social media for football fans. So going a little bit more into the detail, I would like to know how do you know or have you identified what content works best for your audience? And do you have like specific uh, audience clusters and you target each of them with different kinds of content? Or so how, how does it work? Yeah, a very good question. So we don't uh, retarget certain audiences uh, because we really want to yeah, show our content to, to, to our whole community and our whole uh, locker room. However, we we uh, know that uh, certain uh, people in this community just want to see the football content. So uh, the example I just gave with the, with, with the goal or the, the, the great uh, artworks we are creating around the Champions League. Um, but other people in this community, they are actually also um, yeah, want to know what kind of uh, games are being played by the, the pro soccer players and which uh, clothes they are wearing, which music they are listening. So uh, while for a certain uh, uh, type of uh, uh, audience in our community is just football really important, we also understand how to um, yeah, relate it to other subjects. That is usually also in the, in the locker room of an amateur football team also something uh, uh, they, they speak about, like gaming, lifestyle, music. So we really try to mix, make a good content mix out of that, um, but always related in some way to football. Okay, but really expanding into yes. other passions as well yes, to keep yes. people engaged. Well, we have a great example. For example, uh, one of our clients is Activision. Okay. And um, they were actually asking like, okay, we have our new Call of Duty game. Uh, do you guys have uh, some good ideas how we can promote it uh, through your channel? And we knew actually, uh, because we have a very good relationship with a lot of pro players because they are following us as well, um, which, one, uh, which ones are actually playing this game. So we reached out to them and said to them like, okay, do you want to come together and create a, a, an online tournament where we actually, yeah, um, uh, uh, check who's the best in, in uh, Call of Duty. So we created a, a tournament with legends and current players, 23 play players all together in one room. And um, this went viral because everybody want, wanted to be uh, a part of this. Um, we gave our community the opportunity to be in this in this tournament uh, as well to to actually yeah uh, play against your your favorite player, which is obviously great. Um, yeah. And th that's actually how we uh, engage our community together with gaming and. Uh, the pro players really liked it because when we were done with this tournament where you can see the, the great emotions they have while they are playing this game, afterwards we said, okay, that's a wrap. And they said, no, we want to play again. We want let's, to play let's again. Let's do it again. So, Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So talking about football fans, uh, Alex, Atletico de Madrid has one of the most engaged and loyal mm. fan base. I think it's really admirable. It's keeping this level of engagement one of the club's uh, main strategies and main goals? Well, I will say that um, it's one of the main strategies for the club and for the innovation department also. Um, I think that is in our DNA. I will say that if, uh, imagine that we will have a camera on our offices and you're watching how we work, we work with that level of engagement with the work, you know, because we love what we do. Um, that is in all our spaces. For example, when you talk about partnerships, it's the same. So we are not selling or renting a space to give you visibility anymore, you know? Uh, what we are doing is to co-creations, co things that uh, we create together. For example, we are working with Telefonica uh, and our stadium, and one of the tests that we did was with 360 cameras all around the stadium. You know, they were in places where you cannot be. 
for example, in the tunnel, for example, uh, really close to the locker room, for example, uh, really close to the beach, for example, uh, in the room where we are organizing everything that is happening on the billboards. And the people love that because, you know, it's behind the scenes, are things that they are not used they never to see. see. Yeah. So, First of all, I will say that, uh, you know, to keep engaged with them, the first thing is that we, we need to say thanks. And to say thanks is creating something that is totally different. So all this kind of experience is uh, something that makes us different, I think. And for example, we were talking about Telefonica, but now we are launching with Sofios.com another kind of uh, space on our app where you can answer some questions about Atletico de Madrid on a daily basis, so you can get rewards and you can get experience that you, you know, money cannot buy. Money so can buy. You can travel with the team, you can meet your hero, so you can do things that you usually don't do. So uh, let's keep it like that. We reached uh, our record. We are now 140,000. <laughs> Uh, it's a huge number, Congrats. <laughs> so we need to keep improving because they deserve it, for sure. Congrats. So, Cristina, do you have other examples uh, from the media side, right, about sports organizations that are yeah. doing very well with yes. keeping fan engagement? <laughs> yeah, sure. We have lots. I mean, most of the sports organizations uh, go to YouTube. You know that YouTube is a global online video platform. and. Uh, is become an, the unique multi-platform in, 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 in the way of multi-format platform. We provide a wide range of different formats for these sports organizations and creators also to reach like different fans, targets. And um, in the case of, for example, V on Demand, Video on Demand, where they can do full games, highlights, behind the scenes, a lot of interviews, etc. We do provide also food to uh, uh, I mean, La Liga, Real, and all these uh, clubs are doing this kind of content. Also, we do have live streaming, another kind of format which a lot of sports organizations are using to engage directly with the fans through ch chat, live chat. They're able to interact directly with them and, uh, and provide like any kind of live streaming, like interviews, press conference, celebrations. For example, the other day, Real Madrid and the final, the champions, the celebration of the championship, uh, they live stream for seven hours in wow. YouTube. So, yeah, and, and <laughs> all the fans were super in, uh, engaged through the live chat, and it worked super well as well. So, and then uh, we did have podcasts, as I said before. We just launched podcasts in YouTube Music, and video podcast is working for a long time in YouTube. I mean, it proved that it's working very well, but now we face that uh, this podcast should be also on the YouTube Music side for them to connect, to have like a unique experience. For example, you are at home watching a podcast, a sports podcast, for example, ESPN podcast on your TV, and then you need to go to pick up your kids or meet some friends or whatever. You close your TV, and then you go to your mobile, connect, and you stay at the same time, at the same uh, um, time where you, you were disconnected from the TV. So, I mean, uh, this kind of experience, the fans are getting very engaged with them, and all the sports organizations and also creators are getting to know better how to use these different formats to target as well their audiences. Shorts, for example, they said is short is critical to reach younger audiences. But it's too, as you said, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. is no rotation. Mm -hmm. What is YouTube doing? Connecting the short to the long form content. That means you create a video, a long form content, and then you create from that video the shorts, and automatically you will see the link to the long form content. So it's a window for younger audiences and Gen Z uh, normally to get into check the long form content. And we prove that it's working for sports organizations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Eugenio, tell us about Dazón. Dazón landed in Spain like five years ago, if I'm not wrong. Yep. Its uh, growth has been dramatic, like a really well-known live and on-demand sports. But what do you feel uh, Dazón has delivered to this super complex landscape of sports and, and entertainment? I mean, it's been a hell of a ride. Um, I think since we started here in, in Spain uh, five years ago, about the company seven, eight years ago, all over the world, we have three pillars. One, technology. The other one was tone of voice. We have just to refresh 
uh, commentators to approach more to digital creators and to become the new broadcasters. It's what exactly what we are doing, or mixed with other kind of commentators, more traditional commentators, and, and find these synergies. Uh, and the third one is community. So we are here talking on community. We are understood, I think, from the very beginning that it was not enough just to put some sports there and broadcast. We just have to find the way to reach communities. Obviously, different platforms. We are partners with YouTube, obviously, and with others. And to try to engage and create bridges with our uh, subscription paywall. And now we have a freemium paywall. So it's all about creating engagement. And then with our tweets, we feel that our storytelling and we tell the teams is a tweet that we are putting is a piece of news we are doing is a game that we are narrating to everyone. So everything has to get our tone just to get this, this loyalty. And then in terms of the technology, I think I have a good example, a very concrete example, how we are working and how we, in a way, we want to think we are this, you know, disrupting a bit this landscape. Uh, for instance, now we, we deliver a new tool called FanZone, where all our La Liga games can be commenting and people can be watching, but as well commenting and doing kind of a chat. And we thought, we are going to go a step further. And with La Liga, we decided that the MVP of La Liga is going on the Dazón games here in Spain is going just to be chosen by fans. So fans are saying, OK, we have a pool. People is commenting uh, uh, or saying, this is, the, this is the, the MVP. And then even send you the question you want to ask to this guy. And our journalists in the mix zone, when the clubs allow us a little bit, is going to ask directly to the player what is being on the chat. I feel this is kind of a good example how we circulate with technology, with how we involve fans on the broadcast, and how we try to develop our product. Really interesting. OK, so keeping fans engaged and building a community is already a big challenge. But when we've got this, how do we make profit? I mean, how do we make money? Let's start with you, Lucas. How does 433? Yeah. So our main business model at the moment is branded content. So we have more than 7 billion impressions each month on our platform. So, um, and uh, obviously, a lot of that is editorial content, but um, it, it also give, gives us the capacity to show branded content to, uh, to a very uh, large audience. Um, and we see ourselves in the sweet spot between leagues, clubs, uh, brands, and fans, where we have the fans in our community, obviously, um, but also a very close relationship with the, with the clubs. Um, and uh, a huge, we can be a huge help to, to clubs and to the leagues to uh, embrace the, the, the growth of football at, at this moment. Because um, the, the Saudi market, the US market, the Asian market, football is by far the biggest sport in terms yes. of viewership, but it's still growing massively. And we can help them with, with uh, actually find those new uh, um, global football fans. Uh, tap into those worlds, and uh, yeah. Aside from that, also help the sponsors because we also see that a lot of sponsors have great sponsorships, but they n don't know exactly how to activ activate those assets uh, in the digital world. Um, and we can be a b big help. Uh, one of our seasonal clients uh, the last year was uh, Turkish Airlines with the Champions League, uh, for example. And then we fly from one Champions League game to the other to show the fan experience um, with the help of Turkish mm -hmm. Airlines. Great. Yeah. Eugenio, how do, does the son monetize and compensate for all those rights uh, in sports? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we are on a journey. Uh, we know, obviously, our, our, our main uh, line of business is subscriptions, just to watch sports. But we want to do more, and we need to do more. And I think we are in a journey just to create the daily destination platform. What does this mean? Is I'm a sport lover. I know that on the sun I'm going to watch the games. I'm going to watch the races. I'm going just to, to do the sports I love. But we know the new audiences, they know they want more. Uh, they want to be contenders, they, they want to engage. So we are on a process to creating a very, very complete uh, you know, uh, site when obviously streaming is going key, but as well you can bet, you can play video games, you can read news, you can really engage with other things. So with all this package, I hope 
um, you know, uh, man, we are doing at the moment, no? We can, sh you on the Dazon uh, platform, you can shop now, you can bet, you can comment, you can read news. The product is going to be super improved in the, in the next time. And I feel that at the end, the raw material that we have is the, is the rights. We are going just to expand the experience uh, just to create, obviously, more engagement, new revenues, and definitely new experience to our people. Great. Alex, so how is innovation driving the club's future? Um, well, uh, that's a huge question, I will say. Uh, well, it's always difficult to uh, talk about innovation because you have different definitions. But I will say that the innovation is uh, the way of reaching your very best. Okay? And it's not reaching your very best as a club. It's reaching your very best as an ecosystem. As an ecosystem of fans, as an ecosystem of platform, broadcasting, social networks. You know, if you work together, uh, the thing that you are going to reach is always going to be bigger. So um, one thing that the innovation cannot guarantee you is that you are going to get results. But something that is going to guarantee you is that you are going to learn a lot in the path. So the next time that you need to do something, you are going to solve that quicker, um, probably better, because you have been thinking about you have been working on that. So uh, from my point of view, innovation is a path. We are not going to reach the final stage, never. So the point is to keep learning and keep learning together. Because uh, you know the same that we lose or win together with our fans, um, the same that there is no soul at our stadium without the people, uh, we need to think on innovation, thinking on a way of uh, doing it together. You know. That's our point. Fantastic. Christina, I think we all know that YouTube monetizes through <laughs> advertisement, but how can sports organizations and creators make revenue on YouTube? Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, in YouTube, all formats that I already discussed before, uh, before all of them are available to monetization. They, they have monetization active. So we do have like a revenue model where we share with the sports organizations and creators. And in on one side, we have ads, through ads. And we have different ad formats. But on the other side, we have alternative monetization, which, of course, we have subscriptions. We have more than 100 uh, million subscribers to YouTube Premium and YouTube Music. But aside of this, we do have like a futures where the creators and sports organizations can monetize, which means that they will get 70% of the, of, the, of the revenue they get. And this includes <laughs> uh, Super Chat and Super Stickers, which uh, the fan pay to be highlighted in a message on the live streaming and premieres. Premieres is like a fake live streaming on the platform. You have also Super Chat, where you can uh, highlight also the messages on the VOD content plus shorts content. We do have memberships. I don't know if you, uh, some one of you have heard about memberships. A lot of cl football clubs are getting to memberships. It's like uh, building your community or your little OTT under your channel. So it's like a, subscri a, a fan will pay in a monthly basis to get to know content that you offer to them in a premium uh, environment. environment. And without advertisement, Without I guess. advertisement. Correct, with advertisement. And also, you will, I mean, as a creator or as a sport uh, organization, you will create different levels of prices. So you will decide, OK, if I want to offer to you a live game, you will pay 9 euros. If you want to do emojis or whatever on the chat, in the live chat when I do a live streaming, you pay 1 euro. A lot of funds uh, are getting into this kind of membership because it's, it's building your community and they're the main channel. And for example, I give you a sample of football clubs. is Galatasaray, Fernebache, uh, Liverpool Football Club are doing this. And it's, it's, there is a good uh, way for them to connect directly with the fans and also get revenue, 70%. And also, we have shopping. We just launched shopping, where if you have a merchandising, a merchant shopping like Shopify, you can put all your merchandising on YouTube on the VOD, on the live streaming, and on the shorts. I've seen that Real Madrid, for example, is doing already this, and a lot of like Brazilian clubs are doing this as well. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. So we've got a few minutes left. So to close up this session, I would like very short if you can tell us how do you see the future? Because every time it's going to be harder <laughs> to get fans engaged. So Lucas. I think AI is going to play a big role in this. Um, and we just um, launched our new app. Uh, it's in a better version, but um, also with our own AI tools to actually service the, 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 the football fan in an in a even more personal way. So if you, want, if you like to play a quiz when you uh, just have your, your morning coffee, you will get a quiz. But if you like to have your news during a, uh, um, your uh, morning coffee and you're a fan of uh, Atletico, then that's the, the, the first thing you will serve. And obviously, it's not something new because the algorithms, uh, it's, it's there for many years, but I think we're now at a, at a moment that it's going to impact so much uh, on all levels that it's, it's uh, just as big as digital was like uh, 20 years ago. Um, so in terms of how you get uh, served as, as, a, as a fan, but also how, how to create content. Fantastic. Eugenio. I mean, uh, we are, as I told you before, in this journey to create this super platform. Uh, I feel at the end the essence of everything. I know technology is changing everything very fast. It's all about how formats are changing, but it's storytelling. So we are super committed with the storytelling, with bringing the passion and all, all of that. And we're going to be just trying to get the technology to help us and, and, be, and be there with it. I agree. Alex? Uh, I will say that uh, we must be focused on the experience because at, this, at the end, it, it doesn't care, you know, the technology that is behind for the people. At the end, for them, is what they are getting from you. If they are getting value, uh, that's the most important thing. So thinking about personalization, thinking about how we can bring them things that they would like to watch or see or experience. I think that that's the most important thing. Great. And Cristina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah. AI is, is like the big thing. And, and I'll give you an example. For example, uh, in YouTube, we just allow multi-audio. For example, if you create a video, one video with different feet, audio feeds, you will be able to have different languages in one video. So this means you, you can double your fan base in the platform. Google just launched Google Aloud, which is available in the United States. Hopefully, it will come to Spain. Mm -hmm. they are, you are able to translate all your English content into Spanish and also in Portuguese. But soon, and hopefully, we're going to do with the rest. But, AI is, is, is amazing. We're doing amazing things. Yeah. Thank you. So AI, storytelling, and money can buy the experiences as the future for fun engagement. Thank you very much to everyone and for all for listening. Thank you.